Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Bus Station Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 1, Episode 17, Hell House. Written by Trey Calloway, directed by Chris Long. Both of these people only worked on this one episode of Supernatural. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. The writing fell off. What, what do you mean? Oh, I mean, I think that just all the teenagers felt incredibly artificial in this episode. And also, it's, it's a lot more lighthearted than Shadow, and it's kind of weird how lighthearted it is following Shadow. Yes, uh, they mentioned, like, the events of Shadow literally once in the episode, and they were like, now yeah. time for some funsies! Yeah, no, same energy as, like, sure, Cass died, but we can't spend all time mourning him, let's go eat cake or pie, sorry. So, before going in, I know that you don't know much about this episode. Yes. So, what did you expect? Um, okay, I just assumed from the title that there would be demons involved because of hell, and I was like, well, it would be fun if this was, like, kind of, like, a mystery spot, like, a haunting attraction, but, like, there are demons in it. Hell House also sounds like what you would call a TikTok influencer house, honestly. Um, <laughs> but I figured that since this is in 2005, there are no demon TikTok influencer houses. We start in Richardson, Texas, two months ago, and there's a group of people walking in the dark. We find out later that they're supposed to be teenagers, but they look like 30-year-olds playing high schoolers playing 20-year-olds. Something's incredibly off about these kids. So it's three guys and one girl. They're heading towards this deserted cabin. Uh, the person leading the expedition, his name is Craig, and he says that his cousin told him about it and that there was like some kind of spirit in the basement that whenever a girl goes in, he will string them up in the basement. Um, so yeah, that's fun. Um, as some of the people are more reluctant to go in, uh, and then one guy asks the girl, do you want me to hold your hand? She takes it, and then he says, are there any other parts I can hold? Um, uh, okay, cool, great. The thing is, like, when he said, like, do you want me to hold your hand? And then she does. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Like, they're friends and they're holding hands. That's yeah. very sweet. And then, like, he made that comment. Yep. And I was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so she says, you, and, like, slaps him. It would, oh, God. I, okay, because later we see another group of teenagers. And there's, like, a girl. And it's like, oh, like, if you don't go in then, like, oh, then, like, the dare is that you have to make out with me, like, this is said by some teenage guy that's with them, and she also does the, like, ew, no thing, and it's just, I don't know, like, this man only has one teenage girl that he knows how to write, and I'm, I'm very annoyed <laughs> at this category of teenage girl. I think it was a product of the time, because, like, now that kind of joke, like, in any friend group, unless it's, you know, obviously a joke, wouldn't pass. Because, I don't know, like, people are just more aware of consent now, I guess. Uh, so they head inside, and there are weird symbols painted on the walls. They head into the root cellar, where there are some jars of stuff and nothing else, really. Uh, so one of the guys is like, Oh, like, there's nothing here, blah, 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 and he's laughing, and then suddenly everyone else freezes and is looking over his shoulder, and he goes, what? And turns around, and there is a girl strung up and hanging from the rafters of the barn. Ah. Uh... Okay, I just have a question about this scene. Because mm. later on, 
way later on, the guy says, and now that girl is dead. Talking about one girl. The girl yeah, who dies like, a little bit later. Who is this girl? Who is this girl? What is she doing here? Who is this person? And like, you know that scene later on where the girl, like, you know, the one who drew the symbols. She was like, yeah, playing she, like, pretend. She jokingly, like, puts a noose around her neck. Yeah, I was like, was that her? Yeah, she was wearing makeup too. Like, pale right. makeup. So I was like, was yeah. that her? How did she get in there how did she get off there yeah, how is she hanging up there and still alive yeah who is this girl i don't know i have no idea yeah i mean maybe she's just part of the tulpa like she's not a real person mm, maybe so that's how the tulpa first manifested yeah. yeah and they said that they couldn't find her on any like missing persons reports or whatever so she might just not be a real person so we go to Interstate 35, which means absolutely nothing to me, but I assume it's a highway in or towards yeah, Texas. It's somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere over there. And uh, Dean is driving down the road while Sam is sleeping, and a Blue Oyster Cult song is playing in the car tape deck. I kind of feel like this entire episode is just a long commercial for Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> well, they already got their Don't Fear the Reaper scene. I feel like they're being a little greedy here. Dean, prankster that he is, puts a plastic spoon in Sleeping Sam's mouth and takes a picture of him, <laughs> which I thought was so funny because the picture screen is literally not a picture screen. Like, it's just the home screen, and then he clicks on a random button, <laughs> and it shows the options of the cell phone. You are not taking pictures, Dean. Those are not pictures that you're taking. Yeah, because later when Sam's taking pictures, you can actually tell that he's doing it. But yeah, yeah. no, they did not do a good job here. The scene is iconic, though. I've seen it so much. Yes. And... We get a couple of iconic scenes and shots in this episode, which is pretty fun. Like, for us, for an episode that's quite insignificant, like, you know, nothing really yeah. happens. It it yeah. had a lot of iconic moments. Okay, but I think specifically all the iconic Sam moments, they're here because there's this one scene pack of, like, Sam goofy funny moments that's on YouTube that's, like, basically every moment of Sam smiling or laughing. For every ensemble AMV that's made with Sam, Dean, and Cass by someone who clearly only cares about <laughs> Dean and Cass, all the Sam scenes in those AMVs are clearly taken from that one YouTube video. <laughs> Am I guilty of this? <laughs> Did you do this? I don't think so. I have made one ensemble AMV uh, of Dean, Cass, and Sam. Like, no offense to my friends who may have done this before, but, like, every time I see an AMV that's an ensemble one, and I see, like, in succession, like, Sam with a spoon in his mouth, Sam losing his shoe, um, Sam covered in glitter, and then, like, Sam laughing as he pulls the thing in the restaurant. I'm like, oh, you just took that one scene pack because you don't care about Sam. I actually, by virtue, don't use scene packs when I make AMVs. Mm -hmm. I scour two episodes. Because I, like, that same thing. Like, I don't want to have generic shots and generic scenes. Wow. <laughs> I am above everyone Your else. artistic vision. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, Dean, having had his fun, like, turns the music up and sings along. And then Sam wakes up and spits out the spoon, and we get the, again, iconic scene of Dean playing air drums on his steering wheel, which I have used in an AMV. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it in every Dean AMV. It, uh, but I have this person blocked, so I don't want to say what their <laughs> AMV is. <laughs> It's you a could good tell AMV, me. Though. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, don't cut any of this out. Let's just put it all <laughs> on Spotify. <Okay. laughs> Sam is awake now and he says, Haha, Dean. And Dean apologizes and says that uh, you gotta make your own scenery here in East Texas. And then we get some dialogue that basically tells us that, like, when they were younger, they used to do pranks with each other as well. And that 
they these pranks would often escalate and Sam is against it and Dean says like what you're afraid you're gonna get a little nair in your shampoo again <laughs> and all I can think of is that one post is like yeah no like people who don't have siblings call this yeah, yeah. <laughs> should we repeat the post or is that too mean I don't know. I think we should, just so the audience okay. has context of what we're talking about. Was, like, people without siblings call Dean putting Nair in Sam's shampoo abuse. Is that, like, the general wording of the post? I don't remember. I think I think that's basically the post. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, my sister has let loose, like, a, like a hamster doll with, like, spinning wheels in my hair. Like... All is fine in the world of sibling. And, like, okay, I don't want to discount, like, that there is actual sibling abuse that occurs, like, in the world and possibly also in Supernatural, but I do think that the Nair thing is sort of just siblings. Oh, um, something else I want to bring up. Uh, when Sam, when Sam's being anti-prank war, he says, man, we're not kids anymore, Dean. And, well, I'm, because I'm still thinking about Dean and Shadow and how he wants everything to go back how it was before yes. and i'm trying to reconcile the lightheartedness of this episode with shadow so i think maybe dean is trying to recreate like their childhood again as a reaction to shadow and prank wars this is the way to do it i think that makes sense that makes sense yeah. as a reading of what's happening anyway so after that comment Sam takes up the challenge. That's the end of that segment. <laughs> we go to the like actual case parts now. And yeah. uh, Dean asks Sam for the lowdown of the case. And Sam basically relays what happened in the intro, like what Crystal said earlier. But a new information for us is that when the cops arrived, the body was gone so the cops think the kids were pranking them yeah. also sam calls the spirit pretty misogynistic because he's a feminist king yeah but he also says son of a bitch later on so i know <laughs> i know you win some you lose some sam says though that he read the first hand accounts of the kids and they seem to be telling the truth Dean asks where Sam read their accounts, and Sam confesses that he was surfing hellhoundslayer.com for cases <laughs> on the way to Texas. And Dean is like teasingly disapproving of this, but Sam argues that they let dad leave, which he thinks is a mistake. So now they gotta find something to hunt. Which is weird, right? Like in Shadow Sam's like, I can't wait to stop hunting and be a person again. And now he's like, well, if we're driving through Texas, we should do a hunt. Like, that's not Sam. Hmm. I think because, like, his vision of, like, stopping hunting is more after they reconcile with John and after they finish killing what killed their mom and Jess. I think it makes sense that here he's, like, doing the thing that we thought he would do in Scarecrow, which is say that we have to save the people who are still alive. Yeah. You know, like in the meantime, let's just save the people who are still alive. Yeah. It's a couple That's of episodes fair. late, <laughs> but <laughs> we got there. They decide to find the kids at some fast food place. Sam says that this is mm -hmm. the place you always find kids in a town like this. In a fucking diner? Yeah, like in a diner? Is this, like, a huge hangout spot for the teens? I, I feel like it's, like, Riverdale core. What, where are we, the 50s? Like, <laughs> are kids literally just in diners all the yeah, time? Yeah, no, it just makes no sense. Like, I was like, is this Stranger Things? Like, what's happening? Like, when that guy, when one of the kids is, like, working at the fast food joint and is wearing his little hat, I was like, this is literally just Stranger Things. Uh, so they show up at this diner, and Sam and Dean start interviewing the kids who are there. And this is a pretty fun segment, because they're shooting it like they do a lot of interrogation segments in, like, light-hearted mystery shows where they're cutting back and forth between all of the answers to create one cohesive, or in this case, non-cohesive narrative. Yeah, they relay what they saw. Um, creepy house, symbols on the walls. There was a girl hanging there from the rafters, but they all saw her with different colored hair, 
and they all saw her in different states of aliveness and motion. Uh, also, one of the guys calls the dead girl kind of hot in a dead <laughs> <Yeah>. sort of way. <laughs> and then, and then Dee's face was like, okay. <laughs> okay! And then Sam's face, too. It's so fucking funny. God. <laughs> yeah. No, they, they're judgmental. Um, and they find out that the person who took them was Craig, who isn't there. So, Sam and Dean go into a music shop where Craig apparently worked, and they say, oh, we're reporters with the Dallas Morning News. We want to ask about this local haunting. Craig says that this place is called the Hell House, and that the story that he knows is that back in the 30s, some farmer named Mordecai Murdoch lived there with his six daughters, uh, but because it was the Great Depression, he couldn't feed his kids, so he decided that it would be more merciful to just kill them fast instead of having them die of starvation. And he attacked them and strung them up in the rafters, and afterwards he hung himself, and now his spirit just strings up any other girl that goes inside. This is not a well-formulated story. Like, I feel like the fact- like, the, I think the issue- I think, like, if this was an actual spirit, it would make more sense for him to go after any children who enter, right? Because the issue is yeah. that they were his kids, not that they were, like, female. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, I was just wondering about, like, what- why didn't he just cannibalize, like, one of the kids? Come on, Yeah, bro. exactly! <laughs> I was like, come on, just, like, pick your least favorite kid and, ha like, serve up a pot roast, and then partway through, the girls can realize that one of them is missing and, like, scream and cry. Like, that's so much more fun as horror. Oh, and also, he mentions again that his cousin Dana was the one who told him this story. So... Sam and Dean go to the house to inspect it, and they try the EMF, but apparently EMF doesn't work when there's electricity around, which is so stupid because they have used an EMF in a house, right? Yeah. In home. So they go inside and notice the markings and the sigils on the wall. So Sam comments that some of those sigils cannot possibly be done by Murdoch because they existed after his death. He says that one of the sigils was around for centuries, but the other one is from the 60s in San Francisco. And Dean says, that's exactly why you never get laid. God, like, what do you talk about with girls, Dean? <laughs> that is his one, like, weird comment in this episode, yeah, I feel. Yeah, he's recovered a little bit from Shadow. So Sam starts taking pictures of the sigils and Dean eyes one up and he asks Sam if he's seen it before and Sam hasn't, but Dean has, although he can't pin like where he has seen it before. Sam touches the sigil and realizes that it's paint, fresh paint. Dean says, well, I hate to agree with any authority figures of any kind, but the cops may be right on this one. He's a libertarian. Everyone who says that Dean would vote blue is wrong. He's literally a libertarian. <laughs> like, th this just reminded me of that. It's commonly pointed out that Sam and Dean's relationship with authority is, like, inverted in terms of, like, their relationship with their father. I don't mm. think we need to get into it because, like, it's it's pretty in your face. But, yeah, yeah. it's just it made yeah. me think of that. So Sam kind of agrees, but they hear rustling. Which they go to check, and when they enter, they are greeted with, with ghost, ghost facers! facers. <laughs> and I did not know that they showed up in season one. I thought that they didn't show up until season three. I was shocked and bamboozled. Yeah, and I think as soon as the ghost facers showed up, like, the main thing I know about the ghost facers is... Well, first, Maggie Zedmore is Asian, so I look forward to seeing her. But second, I know about... You have to go be gay for that poor dead intern. <laughs> um, and yeah, I was like, oh my god, is this is this episode the one with some poor dead gay intern? And is the reason that he dies because 
like, Supernatural has decided to commit an entire homophobia and have this woman killing ghost kill a gay man because that's basically the same thing? Like, what's happening? But no, no dead gay interns. No dead gay interns for this episode. And also, they don't mention the name Ghost Facers. They haven't established yeah. it yet. We look forward to that in the lowest rated episode of season three. <laughs> oh, is it really? Yes. I, or so I've heard. Is yeah. it bad? I don't fucking know. I mean, it won a GLAD award, right? Is that <laughs> bad episode? <laughs> it didn't win a GLAD award. It was like nominated. <laughs> God, <laughs> supernatural loser of the GLAD award. They deserve to be nominated only to lose, honestly. <laughs> okay, so it's the ghost facers. Um, they just look like two nerds. Yeah, um, they have a lot of ghost hunting gadgets on them. And they tell Sam and Dean that they're professional paranormal investigators. They have business cards, and it turns out that they run hellhoundslair.com. Okay, I know I just watched a whole episode with both of them in it, but which one is Ed and which one is Harry? Harry is the one who is um, more scared, and Ed is the one who's more um, proud, I okay. guess. Oh, okay, Ed's the one with the beard. Yes. Okay. I, I don't even know if, if that's true. <laughs> because I, I don't remember facial hair, but I think so, yes. Ed is the one with the yeah. beard. Okay, um, and they tell Sam and Dean, oh, we know who you are, amateurs looking for ghosts and cheap thrills, while they're trying to conduct a serious scientific investigation. And they start telling Sam and Dean about EMF. Sam and Dean are pretending that they don't know what they're talking about, like, oh gee, EMF? What's that? They, uh, Sam and Dean ask them a little bit more. Turns out that these two have never seen a ghost before. They just heard a vase fall off a table once in an old house. And Sam and Dean are like, okay, we are leaving these clowns behind. Uh, so they leave. We find out that Ed and Harry before this smoked some weed and are feeling a bit giggly and stoned. Okay, so like, Ed and Harry are very clearly like nerd guy archetypes. And I feel like they're, they're made fun of because of their lack of bravery, their lack of skill, and also I think their lack of masculinity in that. Yes. But yeah, like, both of them, like, mention that they're virgins and all of that. Oh, did they mention that they're virgins? No, because he's like, after we get famous, we'll get to have sex with girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, like, what is Supernatural's target audience? Because, like, if your target audience is men, if you want money, you want, like, the Star Wars fans that go to Comic-Con and are kind of like Ed and Harry, right? Yeah. So, like, like, what do they gain from this? I think, for me, like, the intention was kind of like, oh, look at these nerds, right? And you are a nerd, the person who's watching this. Yeah. But, like, isn't it so funny that you're a nerd and, like, you're watching this, like, masculine, masculine, heroic man? Oh, yeah. Like, you will never be Sam and Dean, but tune in next week and watch our ads, please. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Supernatural, as we know, has a long and winding history of making fun of its fans in That's this show. That's true. So maybe this is just the beginning of okay, that. Okay, so they're outside of the library now, and it turns out that uh, the only person who lived in that house in the 30s was some guy named Martin Murdoch, who had two sons and never murdered anyone. Dean can't find any missing persons cases that match that dead girl at the local police station. So yeah, this is probably all made up. Dean says that they should just have some fun at a bar and then head out. Uh, he gets in the car, but Sam does not. He leans down, smiling and waiting for something. Uh, Dean turns the key in the car and suddenly like, this, like, pop music starts playing really, really loudly. I don't know, like, what genre it is, but I guess it's just not Dean's usual thing. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And then Dean sort of panics because it's very loud, and also he's a, he's scared of pop music, I guess. Um, and when he tries to turn it off, the wipers of the Impala turn on. So yeah, I guess Sam what like rewired the buttons of the Impala. Like how did no, he I do think, this? I think the wipers were already on oh, when okay. he turned on the car. Okay, yeah. All right. So Dean Dean is freaking out a bit. Um, Sam gets into the car. He is laughing very much. Um, he does this thing where he like licks his finger. And then yeah, and points it himself. <laughs> points it at himself. I, like maybe this is a thing that people did in two thousand five. No, it's five. Is it still a thing people do? It's a it's a way to know where the wind blows, right? So it's like yeah. a reference of like uh, it's blowing at me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. The wind's blowing at me because I'm the best or whatever. Sam's trying to communicate. This is this um, Frank was weak, man. It's weak. Yeah, that's what Dean says. Dean says that's all you got. Weak. Okay, and also <laughs> Dean says that is Bush League. What does that mean? I have no idea. Um. Okay. The dictionary just says that it means being of a lower group. Oh, it's like in baseball. It's like the minor league. Says I, the person who doesn't know jack shit about baseball. Nor do I. So we go back to the house where these three teenagers are walking outside. Basically, basically one of the girls in the group chose there in a truth or dare game. And her options were to either go inside the house and get a jar from the cellar or make out with the guy in the group. So she Ugh. goes into the house. And like the two remaining people were like, Oh, would you even take that there? And the other guy was like, hell no. But like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. <laughs> if you don't want to make yeah. out with someone, like, you don't want to make out with someone. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, both of the people, like, making fun of her are white and she is brown. Which, like, yeah. is not maybe that big of a deal. But then her death seems like one of the more graphic ones in Supernatural. So it was, it's just overall not a good look. And they also do the thing where they like, call her a straight A student later. She's a straight yeah. A student. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Yeah. And oh like okay. I said Brown, but like specifically she's South Asian, so Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so she goes into the house and she starts hearing some noises while in the house and she tries to say like hello, is anyone there? But Obviously, no one responds, and then she goes to the cellar. Sorry, um, there's like some chicken feet hanging from the fireplace, I think, which I yeah. guess is supposed to make the house look scary. But I was just like, that's just Literally, what my like, parents eat, that, eat at dim sum. Yeah, <laughs> that's just food. <laughs> like, what's up? And also, is that like fake chicken feet? Right. Yeah, because yeah, later, dry. like they, yeah, they show like Craig and his cousin putting it, putting them up. Like, did they go? kill some chickens for this anyway so she goes to the cellar where she hears some more noises which frightens her and she drops the jar and she proceeds to walk a bit this is like the part where it's like why are you walking inside the girl like walk yeah, to like, the door could, yeah no like she passed by several like jars to walk further in to get the jars further in the cellar like girl why and then a giant of a man attacks her and strings her up. And it's, like you said, it's more graphic than, I guess, some other scenes that we've seen. Although, I guess season one is a bit more on the graphic side than future yeah. seasons. This one is, like, violent, Yeah, you know? Because usually when people die in Supernatural, like, you cut away and then there's a blood splatter. Or you cut away and you hear a scream. This, like, we see her face and, like, her struggle and her screaming the whole time while the rope is being put around her neck and yes. she's being strung up until she dies. Like, it's very, it's just a lot more detail than we usually get. And it's not good to watch. So, in the morning, Sam and Dean arrive at the scene. And the cops are saying that this girl committed suicide, and 
they do the whole like we said earlier like she's academically gifted so she can't possibly have committed suicide and it's like i don't know it just rubbed me the wrong way because again the the girl was visibly south asian so sam asks dean what he thinks and dean admits that they may have missed something okay question what happened to the other two kids yeah exactly like <laughs> Where are they? Like, they have to be feeling really bad, right? Also, did they just wait there? Like, when? Because the, it's the morning when the cops yeah. are pulling and her out, right? they're taking out the body. They're taking right. out the body in the morning. Yeah, so did those kids just wait and they were like, Well, I guess our friend died in there. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are they doing? So... It's night, and Sam and Dean are trying to get in the house again, but there's two cops patrolling the house because they don't want any other kids going in. Uh, they see that Ed and Harry are also coming to investigate the house, and they are wearing, like, these goggles and headlamps and stuff, just a lot of stuff. Um, and Dean decides to use them as a distraction. Uh, he yells, Who you gonna call? Which is the Ghostbusters line. Uh, and the cops notice Ed and Harry and start chasing after them. While well, they're distracted, Sam and Dean head inside the house. And Dean brings up again that he recognizes that weird symbol, but he just doesn't know where it came from. They go inside the basement, uh, and they're looking at the jars. Okay, it looks like there were more jars there than there were last time. And I thought that this was some kind of fun horror thing where, like, this ghost collects a new jar for every person he kills. But I think the prop people were just inconsistent. <laughs> Dean dares Sam to take a swig of the jar. And Sam says, what the hell would I do that for? So true, Sam. Dean says, I, I double, double dare, dare you. Dare you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think he is very much being a child this episode as a reaction to Shadow. It's still kind of funny, though. It, yeah, it's still funny. Uh, they hear a noise in the cabinet, but it's just rats. Um, Dean says, I hate rats. Sam says, you would rather it was a ghost? Dean says, yes, and Mordecai has heard his wish and appears with an axe going after them. Sam and Dean shoot at him with their rock salt guns. But nothing happens, and Sam's like, what the hell kind of spirit is immune to rock salt? So they start running out. Uh, Mordecai smashes all the jars with his axe in a kind of cool shot, uh, and Sam and Dean run out. They come across Ed and Harry, and th these two are like sneaking around, and they allegedly like lost the cops. And we, I think we see the dynamic here, right? That, like, Ed is the more, like, we should do this, we should do this, and Harry is a scaredy cat. Anyway, just at that moment, Sam and Dean bust out of the door and start running away. And uh, Ed and Harry see Mordecai in the doorframe. One of them was taking a video, which is gonna be a bit important later. They also run off, but before they run away, they were caught by the cops and... Uh, arrested, I presume. Oh, also, Ed, when he sees the ghost, says, Sweet Lord, and then Harry says, Of the Rings. Of the Rings? Yeah, so they're, yeah, so they're really digging in on the making fun of nerd guys thing. So in the Mattel room, Dean is pondering over the symbol. Wait, first, can we talk about how the motel is Western-themed, and first it's a shot of the outside of the doors, and there's, like, cows on the doorknobs? It's really cute. Oh, that's cute. He says, like, this whole case is bugging him because of the lore inconsistencies. Like how Mordecai only attacks girls. Well, he says chicks. Yeah. But I didn't want to say chicks, so I changed it to girls. Oh, but I need to say it so that I can pull up a certain spreadsheet that I have. <laughs> he says he only attacks chicks, and yet it attacks Sam and Dean. And then Dean says... That explains why he went after you, but why me? Can I give him half a point? <sighs> For being what? Misogynistic against Sam. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, just like, in general, just using being a girl as an insult. 
I don't think he was using. Oh, okay, I get what you yes, mean. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was using being girl as an insult. But okay. like, I was, I was, I'm so entrenched in my trans and your trans, trans Sam. Sammy agenda. Yeah. So I was like, he's being transphobic. He's being here. transphobic. <laughs> Or if we're talking trans femme Sam, then he's being an ally. <laughs> yeah, no, but he's using being a girl as an insult, so is that a point? Yeah. Okay, and... Dean has gotten to 21 misogynies now. God, I can't believe I was, I was literally like, this is transphobia, like, first and foremost. <laughs> this is canonical transphobia. So Sam is like, haha, that's hilarious. And then he continues on that the legend also said he hung himself, but the man that attacked him had slit wrists and also had an axe. So the, the lore of this ghost is all over the place. Sam is confused by all this, and then he opens up hellhoundslayer.com, and the top article is about what Mordecai really is, according to Ed and Harry, which is a man who chopped his victims with an axe and then slit his wrists. And Sam is like even more intrigued now. And then Dean realizes where he has seen the symbol before. So they go back to the music store where Craig is working. Yeah, so they go to talk to Craig and they tell him that, well, Dean tells Sam that I figured out what that symbol is. It's the logo for Blue Oyster Cult. And then he confronts Craig and he says, so are you a fan of Blue Oyster Cult? Or just scaring the hell out of people? Like, tell us about the house. And Craig says that, like, a few weeks ago, he and his cousin Dana were just bored. So they went to this house and they thought it would be funny to make it look like it was haunted. So they painted some symbols from her theology textbooks and some symbols from albums and then made up some story about like a Murdoch guy who used to live there and he told people and it spread after it went on hellhoundslair.com and he says it just took on a life of its own. I thought it was funny at first, but now that girl's dead. And yeah, he says none of it was real, it was totally made up, etc. Sam and Dean are like, okay, cool, and they leave. Yeah. It's purely exposition. <laughs> yeah. The, the, there's the scene where, like, because the, the, the scene where he tells that Dana and him were doing, were writing symbols on the walls, uh, they do, like, a flashback where they are writing symbols on the walls. But one of them was so funny because Dana was spray painting a symbol that was already spray painted into the wall. And I was like, what are you doing, girl? Are you sealing this with a clear paint? Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. So, back in the motel, oh, no. Dean enters the room. And he shouts, Hey, I'm back to Sam, who is showering. Dean takes out a little pouch of powder, which I guess is itching powder, and started dusting this onto Sam's clothes as Sam does exposition from the shower. Sam thinks it's a tulpa, which is a Tibetan thought form. Okay, let's talk about the tulpa first. Yeah, okay, before we get into that, tulpas are not actually, they didn't actually originate in Tibet. They're a lot more tied into this religion called Theosophy, which was created by a Russian immigrant in the 1800s in the U.S., but borrows a lot from Eastern mythology, and one of their beliefs is that, like, oh, there are, like, these masters who, like, can connect with, like, the spirits of the universe or something, and all of them are centered in Tibet. So, like, it was just some white person, like, like using, like, the whole, like, oriental myth or whatever to like make oh, up was some it religion the white yeah it was a white Ru it was okay. a white russian person who made up this religion so i don't know it's it's weird that it's now actually like considered tibetan, tibetan by supernatural when yeah it was a whole like exotification thing to try to make 
this random religion seem more legit. Anyway, back to, now now back to the, the worst thing that's ever happened in Supernatural. Now to the real horror of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, We've heard of racism, but have you heard of Sam shirtless? Ugh! <laughs> Sam busts out of the shower and he is only wearing a towel on his hips. And and Dean is like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go now. I have to go to get some food and enters the shower. <laughs> go, Dean, get some food in the shower. But uh, to, to focus on what is uh, important in this scene, like Sam is shirtless and he is holding a towel on his hips and the way he's holding the towel is so like, funny because there's yeah. like a little slit uh-huh. yeah no this is Where? like one of those slits on the dresses like yeah like his right leg is speaking out bro because i guess the towel is too small <laughs> it cannot cover all of sam's cake yeah. It's so low on his hips and it's like seconds away from slipping off. It's like like a like a one of those backpacks with only one strap on it. Like it's at that kind of an angle. <laughs> yeah, like and when he's walking, he one of his flex I'm sorry, one of his pecs flexes on its own. <laughs> God. <laughs> This was, I remember watching this, like, last year. Again, like, I watched, you know, up until here in Supernatural last year as a way, as, like, my, like, I'm going to rewatch all of Supernatural, and then I got bored. But, uh, this scene... <laughs> maybe this was this what made, made you made quit, quit Supernatural. <laughs> yeah. Honestly... <laughs> I was so shocked because I would see like screen caps of this scene, right? And I would yeah. always think it's from season six. Because right. he's so buff. Yeah, like that is not like the baby faced season one Sam. Like what is happening under there? Yeah. Put him it's back so in his scary. clothes. <laughs> Put him back in his clothes. You know all those posts that's like Sam is Sam unless he's shirtless, in which case he's Jared Padalecki. Yeah, it's so yeah. true. Like, yeah, when Sam is shirtless, that's Jared Padalecki, and that's not allowed. <laughs> we don't want Jared Padalecki on our screens. <laughs> Ugh, can you imagine? So, now they're at a restaurant. Sam seems to be uncomfortable because Dean put itching powder in his underpants. So they're talking about the tulpas. Sam says that apparently in 1915, a group of monks in Tibet visualized a golem in their head and brought it to life. Aren't golems a Jewish thing? Yes. Yes. Yeah. They actually they're... have a golem oh, in right. this uh, show when like, Aaron, at some point. Aaron has a golem, right? Yeah. yeah okay. So, they're just really mixing every possible religion that isn't theosophy into this. Yeah. Sam thinks that the same thing could be happening here, where these 10,000 web surfers brought Mordecai to life by believing in him so much online. Dean says, people believe in Santa Claus, how come I'm not getting hooked up every Christmas? And Sam says, because you're a bad person. So true, Sam. And then he shows Dean a photo of one of the symbols in the house, which he says is a Tibetan spirit sigil. I tried to see if this is an actual symbol. Nothing is coming up besides supernatural results. He says that the sigil is used to concentrate meditative thoughts like a magnifying glass. So I guess if people are looking at the symbol and thinking about Mordecai, it could have created him as a tulpa. Uh, and this is also probably why he keeps changing to fit whatever people believe at the moment. They don't really know how to kill him quite yet because apparently he's taken on a life of his own. And he's just a thought form now. Supernatural core. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Uh, and also, Ed and Harry have posted the video that they took of Mordecai yesterday. So there are a lot more hits and people are believing in him even harder. So Dean 
says that, okay, well, I have an idea, but, so let's go. Uh, Sam is still scratching, and he says that he thinks that they're allergic to their soap. Dean laughs. Sam says, you did this? And then he says, you're a friggin' jerk. <laughs> I love that they can't swear on Supernatural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just want to mention, too, that, like, this scene is the first scene that I, personally, or am able to look at Sam's eyes, like, in lighting that doesn't hide its color. And it made me oh. so, like, upset. Because it's so visible that he has green eyes. Sam and literally it, like, has, brown, has eyes. brown eyes. Like, I don't care. Like, he literally, literally does he has have brown, brown eyes. eyes. Like, he literally yeah, I don't have care brown what eyes. you think. Like, he has brown eyes. Yeah, I don't care that this scene made me uh, face the truth. Well, my truth is that he has brown eyes. He's my beautiful brown-eyed boy. So <laughs> We go to a trailer. So Ed and Harry are talking. Harry doesn't want to go back to the house. And Ed is trying to talk him up. Don't you feel like their names are inverted? Like the vibes, right? Like, Ed is supposed yeah, to be, Yeah, like, Ed should be the scared one, and Harry should be the brave one. That's the vibes of their names. I agree. Yeah. I actually, like, mistook them, their names, at this scene, and I had to go back and change it in my notes later on when I was, like, revealed the truth. It's not your fault. You were still reeling from Sam's eyes <laughs> not being brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was just lies after lies after lies. <laughs> Uh, so Harry doesn't want to go back to the house and Ed is trying to talk him up. So he says, Harry, you're a ghost hunter. And Harry says, I know, but I've never actually seen a ghost before, like an actual ghost, like an actual apparition. And Harry says, like, this is your opportunity to make it big. Fame, money, sex, dot, 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 with girls. With girls. <laughs> they have absolutely <laughs> fucked. Like, yeah, yeah, like, Ed and Harry have absolutely given each other, like, friendly handies before. <laughs> yeah. And Harry, like, says, think about it like this. WWBD, what would Buffy do? Okay, yeah. do you know? Have yeah, you seen, I know, Eric you Kripke, Buffy? I haven't seen Buffy, but, um... I what when I heard this I was thinking about how Kripke pitched Supernatural as Buffy without the women. Oh no, for real? <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, he did do that. That's <laughs> so sad. I am tempted to watch Buffy. I haven't, but I probably will at some point because it's referenced a lot in Supernatural and it's like fundamental to your understanding of Supernatural apparently according to some people <laughs> and I've done this before like I've watched uh, some some shows of Star Trek because of Supernatural so like might as well right <laughs> I probably will not be watching Buffy but you have fun yes thank the, you the Bab Pod like the Bab Pod sequel is gonna be after Grey's watched every episode of Buffy and I only know about it through social media <laughs> exactly <laughs> and Harry says like I know but Ed she's stronger than me <laughs> and then we hear pounding at the door it's Sam and Dean when they open the door Dean says like look at that action figures in their original packaging what a shock but like i was like okay supernatural show me the action figures show me the castiel funko pop show me the castiel yeah. funko pop <laughs> but i thought it was so funny that they were like oh look at these action figures but like we don't get the money shot of the action figures because exactly. they can't afford it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Anyway, Dean says, like, shut down the website. He makes the case that because uh, hellhoundslayer.com has thousands of fans, that means people are going to keep coming into the house and keep getting hurt. Harry kind of agrees with this, but Ed was like, nope. So Harry immediately was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. And then Ed says that they have an obligation to the fans. And Dean says, well, I have an obligation to kick your ass. <laughs> 
uh, at which point Sam stops him and we realize, the audience, we realize that yeah. Sam and Dean are doing a rehearsed bit right now, which is always fun to watch. Sam says, yeah. like, I can probably tell them that thing about Mordecai. Oh, I, I, I hate to bring this up as a Sam fan, but first he says we should probably bitch slap both of these guys. Oh no! I yeah. cut that out of my memory. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I hated do it. Think, I do think we need to give Sam something for this. It feels unfair because, like, the barrier for Sam misogyny is so That's low. That's true, because, yeah, no. Yeah, like, Dean's the son of a bitch ten times an episode and we let it slide and then Sam says it once and we're like, Oh my god, Sam, how could you? You're right. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. But Sam, just shaking my head and frowning to show I disapprove of Sam saying bitch slap. Don't ever say I never did anything for you, Sam, girls. <laughs> Sam says, like, that what crystal said and then that i can probably tell them that thing about mordecai but they won't help us out so let's just go so they turn to go and ed and harry chase them sam and dean keep doing they're like don't tell them sam but if they just agree to shut the website and then dean's like no but they won't so don't tell them and ed and harry go like okay we'll do it we'll shut down the website and sam says only if you shut down the website only if you promise and ed says like totally <laughs> and sam quote unquote reveals the truth behind mordecai which is that he apparently shot himself with a 45 and that if you shoot him with a 45 with special iron bullets it kills him so harry and ed are super excited about this yep they're not shutting down that website now they're at some other restaurant, and hanging on a wall is like some 3D fisherman thing, and if you pull a cord, his mouth moves up and down, and like some annoying laugh sound plays. Sam tells Dean, if you pull that string one more time, I'm gonna kill you, and Dean stares at him and without looking away, pulls it again. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but Dean says that Sam needs more laughter in his life. We find out that Hellhound's Lair has updated with the information that Sam and Dean gave Ed and Harry. Yeah, apparently Mordecai Murdoch has a fatal fear of firearms, so they're planning to wait a bit for the new story to spread, and then at night they can probably just go and shoot this guy. They, like, do cheers with their beers, and... Dean picks up his beer bottle, and Sam starts laughing, and it turns out that he super glued the bottle to Dean's hand. Um, <laughs> Dean says, you didn't, and Sam says, oh, I did, and then starts pulling the string for the fisherman laughter again. This, this is a good scene, and it's also one that you see in the Sam AMVs. Well, the ensemble AMVs for people who don't care about Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His laugh is so fake. Like, Jared Padalecki. This is Jared <laughs> laughing. This is not Sam. Sam would not laugh like this. Still cute, though. Like, it's good to see him happy, because I know he doesn't get to be later in this show. <laughs> yeah. So we're now outside the house at night, and the... We're hearing the fisherman laughing, laughing sound, uh, and two cops are like, I'm hearing something, we should go check it out, and they head over, but it is just the fisherman thing. They fucking stole it! <laughs> they, I know! They, how did they take it from the restaurant? And then, while the cops are distracted, Sam and Dean run into the house with their guns. Dean says that he barely has any skin left on his palm because of Sam's super glue. But that sounds like I'm not touching that line with a 10-foot pole. What does that mean? Actually, I was wondering that too, and I was like, is this like... A masturbation joke? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought too, but, but it it's like... it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's fine. Sam barely cracks any jokes ever, so he's yeah, a bit rusty. Okay. You're, you're, you're funny to me, Sam, even if you're not <laughs> funny to me. So, they go in further, and then... 
Ed and Harry are there. Um, but they scare Sim and Dean, um, and they point their guns at them, and they- Ed and Harry are freaking out a bit. Uh, they're filming, and they're trying to get a book and movie deal, apparently. And, okay, so a sound comes from the cellar, uh, and they look at it sort of apprehensively, and then Mordecai bursts through with an axe. Sam and Dean shoot at him a bunch, but he just keeps disappearing into mist. Ed and Harry are sort of afraid. Harry asks, did you get him? And Ed says, yeah, they got him. And Harry says, no, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, so while they're trying to look through the footage, Mordecai reappears and slams his axe through the camera. And Sam and Dean are like, what? Why, why didn't that work? Like, didn't you guys post that story? Uh, and they said, yeah, but then our website server crashed. So, yeah, the the new story is not well known or believed. They don't really know what to do. Ed and Harry run out, uh, but Mordecai blocks them. The the way they run out is like they're doing high-pitched screaming. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, like, I know that they're making fun of these guys for not yeah. being masculine. Yeah. But I did find it funny, so maybe I'm part of the problem. <laughs> Great misogyny moment. <laughs> I mean, look, like, yeah, sorry. If I was in that situation, I would have fainted by now. So these guys are doing a really good job, honestly. <laughs> so, yeah, and Mordecai is going after them. Um, They're, like, saying some Christianity stuff to try to get him to back off. Yeah. Like, like, they're yelling, the, like, the power of Christ, Christ compels, compels you. you. <laughs> um, but then Sam distracts Mordecai who pins Sam against the wall with an axe. Ed and Harry run out, whereas Dean is splashing gasoline everywhere in the other room. Um, he comes in and, like, he, like, he, like, shoots fire at Mordecai? And Sam. Like, he shoots and fire Sam. towards Sam. And <laughs> like, Sam, that's the thing but that Sam's, like, fine? Yeah, he's completely fine. <laughs> yeah, Sam's fine. Um, despite having fire shot at him, and then the two of them run out, um, and Dean is like, well, part of the legend that's currently believed is that Mordecai is forever imprisoned in his home, so let's just, we just gotta burn the whole place up. So he does that, and Sam's like, this is not a good solution, but Dean says, well, he can't haunt a house if there's no house to haunt. It works. <laughs> um... And if the legend changes again, then we'll just have to come back. And then Sam says a line that I've seen quoted on Supernatural Tumblr a bit, which is, kind of makes you wonder, of all the things we hunted, how many existed just because people believed in them? Which is a pretty good line, but then they linger on it for so long with dramatic yeah. music playing as the house burns. So at the end, I was like, maybe I just shouldn't even put this as my best line for this episode. Take that. But <laughs> no, it's a pretty good <laughs> line. And, okay, I think, I wish that they, I don't, do they go into this that much in future seasons? No. Uh, the only time that Atulpa, like, shows up again on my memory is when it's not Atulpa. In Boo. season 10, episode 5, 4, whatever. Fan fiction. Ugh. No, because I think the interesting thing about that is, like, I don't, like, because this episode is about, like, the divide between the hunters, like, the real masculine hunks who believe in ghosts and can, like, save people, and then these, like, random nerd bros. But it's, like, if... If so many of the monsters that they've hunted in the past only exist because people believe in them, like, hunters are part of the problem because they're the ones who are believe in the monsters, who are collecting information on them and, like, forming community around hunting them. So, like, that would be interesting, but no, it's just still Lord of the Ring fans are the problem and hunters wear leather jackets is the, the moral of this episode. So, we go to the epilogue. Ed and Harry are walking to their car from a store, and they pass by Sam and Dean. At first, they were like, should we tell them? Um, no, might as well. And then they tell Sam and Dean that 
a Hollywood producer has contacted them who read all about the Hell House and wants to auction the motion picture rights and have them write the movie and also make an RPG. <laughs> and we're supposed to make fun of them for it, but like, it's like, RPGs are fun! <laughs> I've actually never played... I don't know, what is an RPG? Um, like, like, I mean, mostly I know about, like, tabletop role-playing games, so, like, Dungeons & Dragons is probably the best known one. But it's just any kind of role-playing story-based game, I think. I mean, like, th video games are RPG, right? Like, JRPGs are RPGs. Oh. But I guess, like, the thing that they are talking about here is the tabletop. Probably, so yeah, I've these never. Are, these are the the nerd guys that they're making fun of. Sam and Dean congratulate them, and they were like, "Best of luck." Ed replies, "Oh, it's it's nothing to do with luck. Nothing to do with luck at all. It's just sheer, unabashed talent." And then they drive off. As they drive off, Sam says, "I have a <laughs> confession to make." I was the one who called them and told them I was a producer. <laughs> Sam, you're such a meanie. So mean. You're so mean. You are so mean. Right. Okay, but that, okay, this implies that Sam told them that they were going to make the RPG, which means that Sam knows what RPGs are, which means that Sam is a little D&D &D nerd. Yeah, but also he's masculine enough to not be like your stereotypical nerd i guess is what supernatural is saying and then dean laughs at this and he says well i was the one who put the dead fish in their back seat <laughs> you're so mean uh, what's wrong with this dude <laughs> <laughs> what did these what did ed and harry like do wrong even also like okay I'm, I'm gonna bring it up now but like the concept of like sam and dean are hunters and they know how to hunt Mm -hmm. And they use the same equipment as the ghost phasers, but for some yeah. reasons, this two have never seen an actual ghost. Like, why? Yeah, I don't know. Is it because, like, you know how, like, when Sam says that, like, trauma lets you be more susceptible to, I don't know, seeing paranormal things? Uh -huh. Like, is that what what's happening here? Like, Sam and Dean are so fucking traumatized <laughs> that they can just see ghosts? Um, I don't think that's the situation. I just think that Ed and Harry are probably just visiting old houses, whereas Sam and Dean are specifically looking for places where a murder that was weird happened recently. And I, yeah, yeah I feel like Ed and Harry just aren't going to that many murder scenes. I feel like that's it. Also, I felt a bit, like, defensive during this entire episode because I, I am a fan of, like, paranormal shows. Yeah. <laughs> like I I mean fan is a big word, but when I was younger and you know like when you're in third grade and you get only half the day for classes and then the other yeah. half you're just at home. Uh-huh. I would spend those half of the day watching like paranormal shows on our television. <laughs> so I I felt I felt a bit attacked. <laughs> they were like <laughs> and they were like these guys are are um fakes Bonies? and yeah. they don't know what they're doing. You were like, tell that to my best friend paranormal show guy number one and paranormal show guy number two. I just like these guys are literally driving to Los Angeles right now to meet with a producer, right? Like they're in Texas right now. They're gonna be driving for so long and spending money on motels and gas money. For, like, nothing. Like, Sam, you've ruined these men's, like, financial lives. <laughs> like, my thought was, like, okay, financially, but also, like, it's so bad for the environment to drive that long. I know. And, like, Sam, do you not care about Mother Earth? <laughs> yeah! Are you an <laughs> environmental student from the University of Colorado Boulder Recycle Man? Anyway, uh, so, Sam and Dean... Uh, declare a truce from their pranks and they drive away and that's how the episode ends and it's blue oyster cult playing again because this episode is an ad for blue oyster cult crystal what did you think about this episode the case was kind of dumb <laughs> but it was nice to see sam smile <laughs> <laughs> 
because like Sam has been so uptight right this entire season so it's right. nice to see him loosen up a bit yeah, yeah. I-, I thought the case the 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 case was kind of stupid, like kind of on purpose. The the episode was really light, interspersed with one very violent murder scene, I guess. But like yep. otherwise, it's very light. And also like the the like B plots, you know, like the pranks and Ed and Harry are supposed to be comedic. So mm-hmm. I get that the plot is a bit goofy. Like I understand yeah. they can't do like a super serious plot. You know, you, when you mentioned in Route 666 that, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's like, kind of weird that, like, they have this, like, oh, lovey-dovey B-plot yeah. and the main plot is about racism yeah. and hate crimes. I was just thinking, like, if they do a serious plot about, like, serious stuff in this episode and well, then yeah, the B-plot no. is, like, prank war, that would be weirder. So, yeah, I, well, I, I accept it for what the, it is. I don't mean that the mystery had to be serious i just thought that it wasn't like a very well built case i guess yeah and also i mean we we don't really like ed and harry's portrayal as we've talked about already it's funny though it like, is I'm funny sorry. though <laughs> well, like, not it's that funny, funny. Though. it's not that funny it's it's not y- yeah i guess so it's funny to me because i am a nerd you know, mm. but I, I don't know. Like, if their target audience was like, uh, you are a muscular man and you th- look at these fucking nerds, they're so fucking funny. Like, I guess that's a little bit less funny. Okay, best line, worst line. So, Crystal, what's your best line? Well, I guess, like I said, I, I'm still going to say that the best line is kind of makes you wonder of all the things we hunted, how many existed just because people believed in them, because the potential in that is quite fun. Yeah. I'll just go with you, because I, I literally cannot think of any other line in this episode that was good. <laughs> yeah, no, it was all very goofy. It was very sparse, the good parts of this episode. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what's your worst line? Hmm. Oh, uh, probably the, like, can I hold, like, another part of you? Like, that was so, like, shut up. Ew. I, I would say, like, Sam saying, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Sam. We Sam. didn't give you a point, but it deserved a worst line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We will acknowledge it. Okay. I am DB rating. What is huh. your guess for the IMDb rating of this episode? Well, okay, I didn't like it very much, but I remember Phantom Traveler got, like, a pretty high score, possibly because it was funny. So, maybe it's, like, an 8.2? <laughs> I don't know. 8.2. Okay. I think this episode was quite weak, like, especially in comparison to episodes prior. So I think it would be like, oh, we're back to pointless shit again. Like, that's kind of the yeah. vibe. So I would go for 8.0. I'm tempted to go 7.9, actually. Well, do you think I should go 7.9? <laughs> I, I mean, after the last time we checked, maybe it's possible that everything's very low. So yeah, sure. 7.9. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. I What? 8.3. You got it. Oh. No, I said 8.2, though, right? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah so but neither you're of us nearer. got it. But yeah, okay. I wonder what the good people of IMDb have to say about this. Yeah, they, they say it's silly, 6 over mm. 10. <laughs> One of the best so far, 8 out of 10. I love that the best so far is still only 8 out of 10. <laughs> What does this person think about faith? That must have been a horrid experience. Uh, I, th- I actually think this one was worse than faith. Yeah. I-, I think this is also worse than faith because faith's plot was pretty solid. Like, it was boring, yeah. but it was solid. Yeah. Is this is faith going to be our baseline for how bad an episode of Supernatural <laughs> is? That's so mean to faith. It's going to be really bad in future seasons. Like every episode's going to be worse than faith. Oh, 
one of these says that it may be the start of the comedic tone, which I kind oh. of see. Like, the future of Supernatural, it becomes kind of like a comedy action show, right? Right. So maybe this is the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's a new concept, and people found it fresh, so... Yeah, right. That makes sense. Someone gave the episode 10 out of 10, but titled their review, I love Supernatural, but this is not Richardson, Texas. Uh, you and, like, Hibbings, Minnesota person should meet up someday. Yeah, maybe you guys will fall in love. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but oh yeah, they said like that this that currently Richardson is a full blown suburb. This looks like what Richardson would have been like fifty years ago. So yeah, we were right. That like mm-hmm. diner vibe scene that was very wrong. Around thirty five mark, you can see almost half a cameraman's body. <laughs> <laughs> Still a good episode though. <laughs> I just saw. Okay, someone is writing like meta about the pranks. So, okay, first they said that Dean's hand stuck to the bottle is related to the character. Oh my god, no, it's, it's- Oh my god, what if this was literally foreshadowing for Dean's alcoholism? No! 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 And then it says that the spoon in Sam's mouth was related to the characters? How so- uh, Is this like the born with a silver spoon in your mouth say? Because Sam was born not with born a plastic with a sil- spoon. <laughs> yeah, Sam was literally born with a plastic spoon in his mouth. Oh, poor Sam. Maybe because like they're saying that Sam had the privilege of not knowing as early as Dean. Yeah. Which is yeah. Which is not necessarily a privilege. Not, not a privilege. <laughs> but yeah. I guess in their scenario it's Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This person should go on Tumblr. They'll make numbers. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, that's it for this episode of Bust the Asian Beauties. Next time, we will be talking about Season 1, Episode 18, Something Wicked. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at thusdeasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B-pod. Also, thank you to everyone who's donated to our Kofi, especially one recent person. I'm sorry, I'm not going to, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a message for you specifically. <laughs> you can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustationbeautyspod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye! Bye.